Well, my dear brothers and sisters, this is indeed a very special and blessed day for us, a day filled with many graces and blessings for two very important reasons. First of all, as we come together today, we celebrate the anniversary of the dedication of this cathedral on this day in 1889. 129 years ago this day, the church in Providence was gathered together to dedicate this beautiful cathedral. And the prayers, the readings of our liturgy reflect the importance of that day today. And secondly, of course, because we come together to celebrate the ordination of our brother, Philip Dufour, for the priesthood of Jesus Christ. So first of all, welcome. Welcome to all, to the bishops, priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and seminarians who are with us today. And in a very, very special way, we want to welcome the family and the friends of Philip who have come together this day. And welcome to the various parishes of the diocese who are represented here this morning, especially Philip's home parish, Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Bristol. Welcome to those who have traveled from out of town and all the visitors who are with us on this occasion as well. It is so appropriate that all of you are here this morning because you have accompanied Philip along the way of his discernment process as he explored the call to be a priest of Jesus Christ. We know that his vocation originated, derived from the heart and soul of God, but it's been nurtured and nourished by the church. It's a reminder then that the whole church, every member of the church, has to be involved in promoting vocations. Today, as we celebrate Philip's ordination, we need to redouble our efforts, redouble our efforts as a church to provide more shepherds to take care of God's people in the future. As I mentioned, the, the backdrop of our celebration today is the anniversary of the dedication of this cathedral in 1889. The dedication of a church is always a very beautiful and important moment in the life of the church, as are the anniversaries of that dedication. We know that Catholics hold their churches in high regard. That's why we always strive to treat our churches with special reverence and respect. It is here in this church and in all of our churches, but here in this cathedral, that God makes his presence known in real and tangible ways. It is here that we encounter Jesus Christ in the word proclaimed and the sacraments that are celebrated. It is here that the faithful come together to support and encourage one another as they continue their pilgrimage of faith. And it is from here, from these sacred walls that we set forward to live our faith and proclaim the joy of the gospel of Christ. So today as we gather for this holy and solemn mass, dear brothers and sisters, let us thank God for the beautiful cathedral that we have that's been provided for us. It's been a source of so many graces and blessings for decades and generations of God's people. And I might suggest that on the way out of the cathedral this morning, you might stop right over here, the final resting place of our founding bishop, Bishop Hendrickson, to say just a little prayer and to thank him for his vision and his courage and his faith that allowed this church, this diocese, but this church, this cathedral, to be built. Now, well, having said all of that, I suspect the reason that most of you are here today is to celebrate the ordination of our brother Philip to the priesthood. Philip, in the name of all those who are here today, congratulations, best wishes, and prayers to you on this happy and holy day. We are indeed grateful for your generosity in responding to God's call in your life. And we pray today that in the power of the Holy Spirit, you will always be a faithful and joyful servant of the Lord Jesus. The rite of ordination reminds us of the dignity and the ministry of the priest. 
The instruction that the church gives us on this occasion says this. It says, our great priest, Jesus Christ himself, chose certain disciples to carry out publicly in his name and on behalf of mankind a priestly office in the church. Priests are established co-workers of the order of bishops with whom they are joined in the priestly office, with whom they are called to the service of the people of God. Our brother is now to be ordained to the priesthood in the order of the presbyterate, so as to serve Christ the teacher, priest, and shepherd. He is to be configured to Christ, the eternal high priest, and joined to the priesthood of the bishops to preach the gospel, shepherds God's people, and celebrate the sacred liturgy, especially the Lord's sacrifice. Philip, my son, you are now to be raised to the order of the priesthood. You will exercise the sacred duty of teaching in the name of Christ the teacher. Likewise, you will exercise in Christ the office of sanctifying. Understand what you do and imitate what you celebrate. And while united with the bishop and subject to him, strive to bring the faithful together into one family so that you may lead them to God the Father through Christ in the Holy Spirit. Keep always before you the example of the Good Shepherd who came not to be served, but to serve, and to seek out and save what was lost. These words from the instruction of the rite of ordination and beautiful and lofty and noble words to be sure but we know that those words will be lived out in the stark realities of everyday life. And how will that take place? How will that happen? Well, a question that's found in the first reading today gives us a clue. There in the first book of Kings, Solomon, as he ponders the temple he has just built, asks an important question. Solomon says, can it indeed be that God dwells among men on earth. Can it be that God dwells among men on earth? And our answer to that question, of course, is a resounding yes. Yes, God has always been present to and with his people. And we know our faith teaches us that in Jesus Christ, that presence of God is perfected and fulfilled. Now, your ministry as a priest, Philip, is all about making God present to his people by praying fervently with and for your people, by preaching the word of God faithfully and courageously, by celebrating the sacraments devoutly, especially the holy sacrifice of the Mass, by being present to your people, walking with them in joys and sorrows of life, by evangelizing, reaching out to the unchurched, and now to the many, many Catholics who have drifted sadly away from their faith, and by serving the poor and the weak, the needy, those who don't have all the blessings and gifts and resources that we have. In all of these ways, yes, indeed, God will be present to his people. And your ministry as a priest, Philip, is the bridge that will allow that to happen. Now the instruction says that you are to be configured to Christ. It's a reminder that your personal relationship with Jesus Christ will be the foundation of your ministry. It must be the foundation of all that you do in your priestly ministry. You are to be close to Jesus and to imitate him in your personal and spiritual life. To imitate Jesus. Now, dear brothers and sisters, I'm told that Philip has a unique gift and talent in imitating other people. Maybe you've heard that. And I'm sure that he's never imitated his bishop. <laughs> and certainly not his esteemed pastor, Father Zeno. But Philip, 
the greatest challenge of your lifetime is now set before you to imitate Jesus, his love, his compassion, his obedience, and humility. To imitate Jesus, who emptied himself completely for the salvation of his people. Philip, if you always strive to imitate Jesus, you will be a terrific priest. You will do great things for the Lord and for his church. And that is certainly our hope and our prayer today. Amen.